at it's Courtney Michelle. I'm trying to build my YouTube. I'm doing like some different sketchy stuff on YouTube in the upcoming months. Sketchy stuff. A lot of nudity. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hair in places you've never seen hair. <laughs> Coming up on the Travis Makes Friends podcast. You know, my mom's friends would be like, oh, she's such a pretty girl. And I would see like the girls in the Disney channel and be like, they're pretty girls. So maybe like someone will just be like, oh, you are pretty and put me in Disney. I remember I booked a movie and the movie shot out of town for like three weeks. And I told my boss that I have to quit. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shot a GEZ music video, dripping sweat. <laughs> And it's a three minute song. So he's just like rapping to the camera and I just am getting profusely more and more sweaty and it's just so bad. And the song ends and I lift up my head and there's just a puddle of sweat. Had a, some video go viral and he's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool actually. Yeah. Is this like a career? Like, could I do this as like a thing for money? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Travis Makes Friends. Today, I'm sitting down and making friends with Courtney DeLugas. Courtney, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm um, in Tennessee, in Nashville. Yes, you are. And the rain somehow is following me in every <laughs> place that I've gone this week. So thank you for that, Nashville. Um, mm -hmm. Literally, it was got rained on while I was walking here. So Yeah. Well, at least yeah. it's not snowing. Well, that's fair. Does it snow here a lot? Oh, we had like a <clears throat> snow week. Which no was shit. a wild concept. But really? Yes. And there's no infrastructure for it. I was so going to just... say that had to go very poorly. No, we were just in our house for a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, it's not. I just came from LA and it was also raining like crazy in LA. And they don't need snow to freak out in LA. <laughs> no. Rain no, is just enough. Just the rain. <laughs> it just like that does the trick. And yeah. all of a sudden everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody's driving like 23 miles an hour on the freeway and shit. It's just like, totally. hey, uh, it's it's water, guys. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. It's brand new to them, though. <laughs> it is. We'll it's a foreign that. concept out there, for sure. And I'm I say that as someone that's from LA. So yeah, yeah. Originally. I did a stint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Courtney, thanks so much for coming on. Um, I found your stuff online somehow. <clears throat> the right? algorithm gods started sending me stuff because I I don't know. I guess they know I like funny things. And, oh, that's very uh, kind. Yeah. So I watched one or two videos and was just like this girl's hilarious and then i sent i was i was sending videos to different people whatever and then one time i was just like oh we'll reach out see what's up and then now we're here so now down, we're here thanks for thanks for sharing but yeah, i appreciate you're welcome. it <laughs> i know i'm helping helping you with that algorithm you yeah, know saves pushing. and shares that's all that matters that's oh, what i hear i mean and you hear correctly okay all right yeah, just checking one. just checking um let's go back in time a little bit courtney because i doubt when you talked to your career counselor in high school that you were like i want to make videos on the internet and <laughs> like I talked to my career counselor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already making assumptions. Well, um, let's go back in time. 10 year old Courtney set the scene. What was life like? Oh, then? good Lord. 10 year old me. Okay. Well, do you, do you want the Disney version or do you want the HBO Max? Version? HBO Max sounds so much more interesting. <laughs> sure, than sure, Disney. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, less music, but, uh, yeah, I mean, ten. So I grew up in West Virginia. I'm from West Virginia originally. Um, and I'm like, sorry. A, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I survived. No, West Virginia has <clears throat> some very lovely people. The people mm -hmm. are just remarkable. Um, but yeah, pros and cons, like everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I grew up in a college town, and the dynamic was when I was young. I mean, when I got older, it was all about partying. But when I was young, I lived in like a nicer area mm. of the town. It's called Morgantown. I lived in a nicer area like by the lake where all of the rich people lived, but I lived in a double wide trailer. So it was an interesting experience going to school. Mm. Um, that was not because we were rich and chose to live in it. That was because we had no money, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Make sure I frame that correctly. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so that was an interesting dynamic to grow up kind of all of my friends had a lot of money mm. and all of my um there's the people in the school so that was 10 year old me what what did your parents do um well my mom was a secretary kind of in and out um her longest stand probably when it started when i was like around 10 she worked for um, the local paper okay and she was i guess you would say like an executive assistant to like the publisher like the okay the owner of the paper who's a lovely man um and was great at her job, crushed it. My dad, let's see, when I was 10, my dad was, I mean, he he worked in construction, 
But, and I've talked about this, like he was in and out of jail a lot of my childhood as well. Mm. But his job was construction. <laughs> okay. So when he wasn't just like doing time in the slammer, mm -hmm. he was building houses. I see. So, I see. man of all trades, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, so it was interesting. So it was just my mom and I <clears throat> in this tiny little trailer, we shared a bathroom. I watched her pee. Um, really helped me get comfortable with other people's vaginas. Yeah, that's how close you guys were. That's how know? close we were. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm really grateful for that childhood in so many ways. Obviously, like, you know, there's there's pros and cons, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. again. Um, but yeah, I think that was, and I was just, my mom was a single mom looking for love at all times. Mm. And I, and she loved me very, very much, but I was also looking for love. Were you only child? I was an only child. Okay. Still am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mom's thinking about having a few time, more at yeah. 60, but <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Play it by ear. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's kind of how I describe. So I was just like constantly looking for, to join like other people's families, like mm. other friends' families and, and just trying to kind of find love and family wherever I could find it. That was, yeah, sure. and then I was also singing and dancing whenever anyone would let me and also slash when people wouldn't let me that was kind of <laughs> that was the vibe so you were always like wanting to do some sort of performing or something yeah or was it I, just like part of your personality it was part of my personality i um i think i was just a ham yeah you know no, no aspirations at the time like to be like i'm gonna go be an actress or for whatever. sure i mean i aspiration is um is a big word but it was more of like oh you know I, and this is so gross to say, but I always thought like, you know, my mom's friends would be like, oh, she's such a pretty girl. And I would see like the girls in the Disney channel and be like, they're pretty girls. So maybe mm -hmm. like someone will just be like, oh, you are pretty and put me in Disney. Uh, I but I, there was no like infrastructure in my brain of pursuing anything in the arts. I did like a musical theater camp. I did um, dance, you know, all of that stuff. And I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved, I mean, quite frankly, the attention. And I loved entertaining people. Yeah. Getting like a laugh or a clap or a whatever was huge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it didn't, I didn't know it was a job. I didn't know it was a job until I was like in my 20s. That like honest. people actually did that. Yeah. And that, made money doing it. Well, that there's like a, there's, that they make money. Yeah. That there's like jobs. Like right. they don't just like, Hillary Death doesn't just like come out of thin air and pop <laughs> on TV. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, she must have just been at a mall at the right time or whatever. That's absolutely what happened. <laughs> It actually might have been, honestly. <laughs> yeah, In the early 2000s, it might have been. Um, they used to do those mall casting things all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And I was always so – because they would have those total scams where you'd go to like a Marriott mm -hmm. conference room and you'd bring – like you have to have a professional headshot. That was $500 yeah, yeah. or they would take right. them there. I was going to for... say, that's the upsell. Yep, 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 <laughs> yeah. yep. The whole package they would give you. And I was so mad because my mom would never let me do it because we couldn't afford it. I mean, it was like thousands of dollars to mm. do these things. And I was like, why can't I do this? And looking back, it was, I'm so, like, that would have done absolutely nothing. And I wouldn't have been able to, like, do a sport or, right. you know, maybe have underwear. So it, yeah, I'm exactly. really lucky that we never did that. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely enjoyed entertaining. I enjoyed being a ham. I enjoyed. So was it, of. like, when, when you were in high school and stuff, were you, act, were, were you, like, just, that's for fun? And now I got to focus on what do I want to do with my life? Or like, did, like, were you always college bound? Like, what was the idea for you in terms of a career and stuff in high school? Well, you're making it. I had no, I, I had no frame of reference for the future. There was yeah. no plan. Back to the whole, like, you didn't talk to a career counselor thing. We did not talk to a yeah. career counselor. I don't, I don't well, know. Well, we have that in common. So I never talked to a career counselor either. And look right. at us go. Yeah, no. <laughs> look at us go. The amount of advice I give on people's careers now, yeah. <laughs> unwarrantedly. Um, but, well, I, the the jump from, like, you know, what would you call it? I guess elementary school, middle school, Courtney, to high school, Courtney, was kind of a big jump. Okay. Um, and so in high school, I was, I just wanted to be cool. I wanted to be popular. I was looking <laughs> for acceptance. Again, the love thing. I was yeah. looking for love, family. And I... I can articulate that now, but when I was in high school, I thought that I needed to be popular. Mm. I was looking for unconditional love, and I thought that that was like, oh, if, I, if everyone, yeah. yes, I was like, if everyone is obsessed with me and right. thinks I'm the coolest girl ever, they'll unconditionally love me. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. that's how that works. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I see no flaws in the logic. To be of honest, course. no, 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 no. I still back I'm it. I'm still doing that. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. But yeah, so I, I, I kind of 
I loved the arts. I loved, again, singing, dancing, acting, all of it. But it wasn't cool by any means. Mm, that's true. And so that Which is weird. That's kind of a weird thing, right? Because like yes. all of a sudden those kids that you're making fun of in high school become fucking Brad Pitt and it's like, well- Superstars. Who's the idiot now? <laughs> well, and it's like the people who are in those fields, even when you're in high school, like when you're in high school and, and there's, you know, Rihanna or there's, again, Hillary Duff, those yeah. people are the coolest mm -hmm. and they're in the arts. Mm -hmm. But God forbid you take a choir class. Yeah, right, <laughs> like right. You're like for real loser. So I just, that- I think was what set me back. I mean, it was everything. It was all about being cool. It was who I hung out with. It was what parties I went to. It was um, what classes I took. It was everything. That was – and then I had a huge – another big shift because I was partying a lot. Mm -hmm. I was banging every guy and I was going to every party and I was drinking every drink. It was a wild ride. Um, and I'm glad it happened when I was a kid, I guess, as opposed to, you know, in my <laughs> yeah. early 30s. When there's whatever. more consequences. For yeah. sure, for sure. Well, when I was 17, I got a DUI. Mm. Um, it was like a felony DUI. It was a big deal. It was a big, big no-no. Um, and I ended up having to like go to court and I was on probation and all mm. this stuff. And I think that was a bit – I lost all my friends. My friends wanted nothing to do with me because I was a bad girl. Sure. All this stuff. Um, and I think that that was, that was my junior year of – high school and so then my senior year was like a totally new person mm, and that summer before was there did you feel like a like a real internal shift because sure. of that or was it more like oh, i just have to do this because people don't accept me now or whatever i'm sure it was i'm sure the impetus was the latter like yeah. i'm sure it was like oh people don't like me i guess i have to do something else or yeah. find other or whatever it may be but i think it was more it was a lot of things too i my uh my mom had remarried and she was married to this man um, who, unfortunately, a year after they got married, he got cancer. And he was really, really sick. So it was a lot of, um, like, him kind of facing death and our family kind of facing this idea of um, mortality a little yeah. bit. And also me facing my – it was the first time that I actually, you know, didn't go to a career counselor, but I was thinking futuristically. Because, mm. like, if I – if this judge at these, what are they called? Hearings, Hearings whatever, is what yeah. they're called, um, decides that I'm a bad person, then I could go to juvie. I could go to jail. Mm. Um, and at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to be, but one of the things in the list was like a CIA operative, you know, probably from some TV show. And I was mm. like, well, that's all the one though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I think it was the first time that made me really, I don't know, just kind of figure out, oh, what are we doing? Like the future is a thing. The future might be, um, I, it, there's, it, it's affected now. Sure. So what sure. are we going to do with it? Um, and where can we find joy? And I always found joy in that particular moment. It was like music. Hmm. And so I really, I, um, I like wrote, was like writing songs with people oh, really? okay. and, you know, I was, I would go on these like websites and I would audition for movies and I just got really, um, a lot of joy from that. And the partying kind of stopped and the promiscuity kind of stopped. And I really focused on – I focused – because at that point, nobody liked me. I had a horrible reputation. I – everyone was like snickering about me in the halls. There was no there was no coming back from yeah, it. Yeah. So I was like, might as well do whatever the fuck I want to do. So your plan kind of backfired. One hondo. Yeah. One hondo. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Never happens. <laughs> yeah. Never happens to anyone. Um, <laughs> plans always work out. But yeah, so I think that was the – yeah. That was the high school experience then. Yeah, well, again, you said it well to be like lucky that that happened even at age 17 yeah, instead so of lucky. 18. Like, oh my God. Just that one, you know, whatever, however, however many months away from turning 18 you were. Yes. You know, that difference makes a pretty big difference at Huge. the time. And I look back too and, and you know, not to be whatever, but there was so, there was all, so many things in my favor. Like I think about anytime I get kind of curmudgeon and I'm like, oh, why does everyone have all the luck in the world? I think about that specific moment. Mm -hmm. I was blacked out drunk driving. I crashed into um, a, a beer pong table that was in someone's yard, some college kid's yard or in the driveway. There could have been people there. Yeah. I, could have, I could be a murderer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people are like, hey, have you ever killed anyone? I could have to say yes. Mm -hmm. And that would be so weird. Um, you know, just a whole different trajectory. <clears throat> if if I, yeah. I got really good grades in school and I – was like a cute blonde girl. And I think that really played in my favor in the court system. They like didn't want me to go to jail. Mm. All of that shit 
I'm so lucky that it, I, I didn't have a different route before that happened. Yeah. Um, and that worse things didn't happen. Well, it you're was dealing with best. some heavy, heavy shit. At, for at sure, that for sure, age. for sure. For like sure. it's not like you know what I mean. Like you're with your dad being in and out of jail, and then your stepdad getting cancer immediately after like marrying your mom. Like you're dealing with some like real adult things at this point. Yeah. And probably grew up very fast in the subsequent years. <laughs> for after sure. That happened. For well, I look back and I'm like, well, yeah, no shit, no wonder we were drinking. Like we were <laughs> yeah, just like anything right. besides this reality. Well, also, again, like I'm I'm genuinely not talking shit on West Virginia. I have nothing against West Virginia, Please but do. in those areas, in those towns, like that's people that's people drink. There's nothing else to do. You know, like you go yeah. to high school, like you're surrounded by just like forests or whatever. Or if you're in Iowa, it's just cornfields. You know what I mean? It's just like, what else do you do? You go drink and you hang out and like, you know, you do you drink and do something in addition to drinking that would not be fun if you weren't drunk. For sure. You know, like for sure. Throw rocks at a pole or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> for sure. And I will say, like, I I kind of had a combination of both. Cause I wouldn't say that my town was like a small, small town. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a smaller town than, you know, Nashville or whatever. Sure. But um it is it's a college town. And it's a college <clears throat> town in West Virginia. Yeah. So it is all just drinking. Mm -hmm. And it was a blast in college. But when you're in high school and you can go to the same bars as college kids mm. and you can hang out with – when you're 17, you're hanging out with your friends who are – you're hanging out with the boys <laughs> who are three years older than you who are now in college. Yeah. It's just a – it's a wild ride. There's way too much ease of access to things that <clears throat> you should not have access, access to right, at a right. young – I mean, I was – I had a fake 21 at 15. Really? Yeah. Damn. It's it was wild. It I was saw wild. <laughs> the bouncer just did not give a shit. Did not give like, a shit. When you're 15, you obviously don't look 21. No, right? No, I mean, no. like, there's no confusing that. Also, you're just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> no, I definitely <laughs> and I definitely did not look like I was not. I did not handle any. There was no. There was no 21-ness <clears throat> yep. about me. Um, Got some Claire's earrings on or for, some shit. <laughs> sure. I'm like still wearing limited too. Like there was <laughs> – all the flags were red. Yeah. And they still – because you pay that $20 cover and they don't give a shit. They're all like, right. oh, yeah, yeah, right. come on in. Yeah. You can buy drinks at the bar and if yeah. we get shut down, we'll just change the, yep. the name of the person on the liquor license and call it a day. <clears throat> so it's an interesting environment to grow up in. I'm so grateful for so much and I love that town so much. Mm, yeah. But I think it definitely fed – if I didn't, if I wasn't, if it wasn't the daddy issues and the stepdaddy issues and the mommy issues, I think it, it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. I just like, mm -hmm. you know, it fuels everything. Yeah, sure. And what's interesting about like social interactions in that context is like everything in your life was fueled by the desire to be like loved and accepted by everybody. And this is like one thing I've thought about a lot recently as an adult, because you're not supposed to care what other people think about you, right? Mm -hmm. But also... In some sense, that's how that's how we operate as adults, as people in a society. Like you kind of have to do things that other people are okay with and in like the broader societal expectations of you. And that's how you learn to get along with people, to build good relationships and stuff like that. You can't just do whatever you want and not give a shit about what anybody ever thinks, because then that leads to like just loneliness and loneliness that's not your choice. Loneliness just because people don't want to be around you. You know what I mean? And it's like, totally. well, to some extent, you do need to care what people think. It's just a matter of like care about the right things that people think about me, care about the right people and what they think about me and not what everybody thinks. Like there's it's so there's so much so much more nuance, you know what I mean, to that so, that so broad funny. blanket statement that everybody likes to make of just don't care what people think about you. It's like, first of all, that's impossible. Yeah. We're literally, like we're like hardwired yeah, let me evolutionarily. Just turn that off. Let me just yeah. hit that switch real quick. Give me a second. <laughs> That's like how we survived as tribes like thousands of years ago. It's yes. like people have to like you or you die. Yeah. <laughs> like, so for sure, we kind of sure. we kind of like are wired to be that way, you know. But then also <clears throat> it's not a bad thing to care about what some people think about you because that's how you end up, you know, being like well, now nobody wants to be around me. Mm. So, and that as a 16 year old was probably a really powerful lesson to learn because, or 17 year old, because then it's like, oh, I can't just do whatever I want and have people still be like, oh, Courtney, she's cool. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it was immediate feedback, I guess is what I'm saying. Like feedback that your actions were not going to be like, you know, good actions moving forward for long term. I think it was, I think it was my first, and I, 
did not learn this. It did not cement in my brain, but I think it was the first kind of instance of you can't please everyone because mm. I was trying so hard. <laughs> I, was re- I was like, everyone will like me. All the boys will be in love with me. All the girls will want to be my best friend, blah, 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 blah. And it just made me realize that if you're trying to please everyone, you actually won't please anyone. Mm-hmm. It's and, and I don't think I, again, I didn't have the the vernacular to be able to say that. I wasn't articulating it then at, when I was 17. Um, but yeah, like I was trying so hard to be cool. And also, I, this is when I started learning and again, didn't cement it much later, but like nobody wants, nobody wants to be around someone who's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, like if basically what you're trying to do is get people to be jealous of you or get people to think that they're, that you are better than them mm-hmm. when you're mm-hmm. trying to be cool. And no one, why would you want to make people feel that way about you? Right, right. And I think it was the first time that I was like, oh, this system isn't working that I have. Um, so again, it was, it, and I, it ended up being more right. like, let me just do what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and then people who I, my, I made a really good friend. She had just moved to the school, which was great for me. I was like, oh, you know, none of the <laughs> yeah, sexually right. derived <laughs> nicknames about me. Incredible. <laughs> we should be friends. We should be friends. Um, there's no preconceived notions you have about me. Um, and even, and God bless her, even when she was told, she was like, that's okay. Um, and we're still friends today. I saw her last weekend. Oh, right. um, nice. Because I think it was the first year that I actually was able to kind of be a better version of myself, or at least just like a version of myself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was who I... It was, I started working out that summer. I started like reading books that summer. It was like a, just a wild, you just learn a lot. Just fun of these like pivotal moments you have in life. Oh, yeah. Suck in the moment, but they're great looking back. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So college, you stayed in West Virginia for college? I did. And in the, went to that same the college in the, in the same town? Why not? Why, <laughs> you know what I mean? Didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I love it there. Yeah. No, I... I wanted to leave for sure, um, but they have this lovely thing in West Virginia where if you get like a three point five in school, I don't know if they still have it, um, then you get to go to school for free. Mm. And that's I, helpful. It's so helpful. Yeah. And again, like my mom, there was there was no college fund, mm-hmm. so it was either me take out a bunch of loans and go somewhere where I somewhere new where I was I would be scared and poor all at the same time, mm. and um, or it was. I actually got, um, I think because of my SAT scores or something, I got like a small scholarship to go to West Virginia. Okay. And all my friends were going. So it made sense. So I went and yeah. I, it was, it, there were moments of high school all over again. I'm not going to say that it was like, that I grew that much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. <clears throat> well, it, you still got to have fun. Yeah, I had a, Oh man, I had a great time. <laughs> I had such a great time. And I will say comedy, I or comedy, college is where I learned um, that I was funny. Mm. Like, I don't think I'd ever really established that I had like a funny thing, Yeah, yeah. but I would, I was in a sorority, which is shocking looking at me. I know. <laughs> um, but I was in a sorority and I loved those girls and we would have our little meetings and I would give like a speech or whatever. And I throw in some, some ziggers, not yeah. ziggers. Z- zingers. Zingers. <laughs> you, got, you got real close. Throwing in some zingers. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I'd get this immediate feedback of people laughing. And I'm like, ooh, what is this? There's no, There's like no better feeling. No <laughs> better feeling. It is a drug. If I could choose one drug in the world, it would be that. Um, you, that, I mean, you kind of are choosing. Right, but drug. like if that was the only oh, yeah, drug I, see, I could I get, yeah, yeah. all the other drugs are still an option for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just living the greatest life <laughs> to ever. Be, to be clear. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do all the drugs. I actually get access to all of them, but <laughs> yes. if I had to stick with one. Exactly. It would, yeah, Gun it. to my head, choose one. Got it. It's that, it's that feeling. Um, and that was the first time that I felt it. And I think that went hand in hand with probably a little bit of what happened in college. Um, my mom, so my stepdad passed away. And my mom started dating somebody else and he she moved to Pennsylvania. So I kind of had okay. I was in the same town um that I'd always been in, but I had a little bit less sure. um you had some a, separation there. Some yeah. separation and like a little less of a comfort zone mm-hmm. or something. And I love my mom more than anything in the world. My mom's a very big personality. And I think having a little bit of distance in those formidable years, mm. I was able to kind of grow more into my bigger personality. Sure, sure. Um and I just <clears throat> I loved college so much. Your I, mom sounds like she's a savage. So like <laughs> she I mean, That woman has been through so much. No kidding. Yeah. Just from the like three minutes that we've talked about her. She's, I mean, 
She's been through Good a job, lot. Good job, mom. Good job. She hasn't always picked the best men, and she will tell you that herself. <laughs> Seemingly. Um, but she, uh, yeah, she's been through so much. I and mean, that was like crazy for her because when my stepdad got cancer, he didn't have health insurance because he was um, like a salesman at the time. And so like all – my mom got like hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt because of it um, and just like had to deal with that. I mean she's been through so much, but she's great now. She's the happiest person ever. She's retired. She golfs all day. Nice. She's crushing it. Did, what, does she still live on the East Coast? She lives in Myrtle Beach. Oh, nice. On a golf course. Good for her. She's all, We went there all the time for vacation <laughs> and she moved there. Nice. And I go, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream right there. Living the dream. <laughs> Yeah. So yes, a savage is a good word to describe it, but more I would just say like just a a badass and a, yeah. a strong woman. Yeah. Uh, what did you study in college besides drinking? Uh, um, blow jobs. I <laughs> I what did I study? I started. I'm trying to remember what I started with, but I ended up doing advertising. Okay. Um, and then you have to choose a minor. When you do advertising that's outside the school, randomly advertising is a school of journalism. It doesn't matter. But you have to choose a, a minor outside of that school. Okay. Which I think is actually a great idea. Um, at the time, I was like, this is stupid. But so I I think I chose bit marketing and I got bored and then I did theater. Okay. And so I got um, a degree in advertising and a minor in theater, which was honestly a huge step because it was kind of embarrassing to go into like theater classes. Sure. But I loved it so much. Um. And yeah, graduated. Um, what's the one that's not super, super high, but in the middle? I don't know. The I cum... didn't go to a real college, so. Oh, Ma Magna what is cum laude? it? Cum... cum laude? Cum laude. Something like that. Summa... Save us, producer. Summa cum laude, something like that. <laughs> Whatever the middle one is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I got. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. Good for you, which obviously led to a plethora of opportunity post-college. Oh, my God. They were knocking down my door. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everybody was like, we need an advertising person, we, but only if they minored in theater. Only if they minored in theater. <laughs> you never know we're going to have to promote Broadway. Um, yeah, no, there was – I. it was so hard finding a job. Uh, but I found a job. I was like just – I wanted to get out of Morgantown, for one. Okay. I knew that was a thing. I had my first real boyfriend, awful relationship, as it should have been at 21. Um, and we had just, he had dumped me and oh, I was, no. I was just devastated. Mm -hmm. How can I, we were supposed to get married and, and be together for the rest of our lives. Have babies. And have, immediately have babies. <laughs> it was great. He had my whole life planned out. It was perfect. <laughs> um, I'm so excited about it. Um, and so I just was like, that happened. I've been in this town for so long. I got to get out. And I had never been anywhere. I mean, we went to Myrtle Beach for vacation, and I auditioned for American Idol that summer nice. in New York. That was it. I'd never gone anywhere. I think maybe I went to Disneyland once. Um, I was like, I don't know where to go. I'm so scared. And I'd been to Myrtle Beach, or I've been to um, Miami. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. The, for... It's basically the same. <laughs> it's interchangeable. Same vibes. <laughs> um, I've been to Miami twice for spring break. And I was like, okay, I'll, maybe I'll just move to Miami. And I looked for jobs in Miami, and I found one, and it was marketing for a commercial real estate company. Okay. And so I was still in Morgantown, and I go, okay. And they, they called me for an interview in like two weeks. I go, great. And I packed my bags, and then I drove down to Florida, and I was like, I guess I'm moving to Florida for this interview. And luckily, my friend, the person that we'd stayed with on spring break, it was like a friend's cousin or whatever, they had this beautiful house in this like gated community where like Enrique Iglesias lived. And I, they were like, oh, you can live with us for free if you nanny for our kid. And I go, Great. I'm horrible with kids, but let's go. <laughs> yeah. um, and I get down there and I'm staying with them and I'm um, getting ready to like figure out or getting ready to find out about the interview and they ghost me. And so now I have no job prospects <laughs> and I'm just in Miami. And I don't know if you know, Miami is not a cheap little city. No. It's a, you need the money. That's right. Um, and shockingly at 22 years old, I had not a lot of money saved at all. Yeah, and they don't take ambition as currency, they unfortunately. Don't. They yeah. don't. Man, would we be rolling I'm high. Trying. I know. <laughs> One day. We'll I'm like, yeah, but I really want to have money. And sure, they're like, sure. yeah, but that doesn't work here. Yeah. yeah. Wish it, what is it? Wishing, wishes in one hand and shit in the other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't understand that saying, but I always say it. Yeah, but I mean, it it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it makes all the sense in the world, but I don't understand it. Um, so yeah, so I was in Miami, no job. Uh, eventually, 
they called back and I ended up doing the job, but it was just not for me. Mm. I did it for about a year. I was making 30K living in Miami, nice. doing marketing and doing marketing, but I was just like making posters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're making 30K doing marketing, you're not doing marketing. You're not doing marketing. Yeah. And it was a small company and it just wasn't my vibe. Um, and so I was like bartending to just like pay rent. Um, and I met this guy who, through a friend of a friend, who was a professional at the time. He was like a professional actor, but he like did background work as like a job. Yeah. It was the first time that I'd met someone who had – that wasn't like a movie star. Yeah, yeah, Not that I'd met movie stars. Right. It was the first time I met anyone who was like doing a job in – They were like an art. actual actor. Yes. And like – like that there was a difference between making like $7,000 a month as an actor versus $7 million for every movie you do. Exactly. Like there's a lot of people that are in this like gray area that exists for between sure. zero and a million. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't think he was making $7,000 a month. Yeah. But um, – He was making something though. He was making something that yeah. man was. Um, and it wasn't porn, right? Well, and if it was, <laughs> he was a handsome man and we love that for him and his viewers. Um. I have no idea, but he, but yeah, so he kind of connected me with these like companies that make, help you be extras on set essentially or background mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I did that and I went, went to my, I remember I got a call to be on like a beer commercial for, and it wasn't even in English. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. And I, sh and I show up and I spend the whole day on set. I had to call in sick from work. Best day ever. Be and I, it, this was after like eight months of just being miserable at this job just mm -hmm. like really like holding on by a thread. I was yeah. drinking a lot. Just wasn't happy. And I had the best day ever. And it really was like, oh, fuck this. Whatever this community is mm -hmm. of people making shit, this is what I want to do. This yeah. is what I want to be in. And the acting was the first route. And I, and I, and I did a few, I did a few more of those things. It's like background. Um, and then I got an agent and I started auditioning. And I remember I booked a movie and the movie shot out of town for like three weeks. And I told my boss at the agency or at the real estate agency, like, I, this is what I want to do. And um, I have to quit. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was, he was very, very supportive. Correct. He was like, no, yo, you can't work here anymore, obviously. Um, and just like take a month off. Um, but he was really, really supportive. I'll never forget. He, because I didn't, I didn't have time to give like a two weeks notice. I didn't, whatever. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, he might have actually said this one because I asked to go part time too. I don't remember when he said it, but he said, "Yes, I want you to pursue your dreams," and I because I would hope that my children's bosses would give them that opportunity as well. Hmm. It's a really nice. I'm not necessarily sure that he had to like spell it out for me like that, but it yeah. did stick with me. Um, and then I never went back to that job. I shot that movie; it was the best experience in the entire world. And I was like, okay, I'm moving to LA and I'm pursuing the arts as like a thing. Yeah. I guess it's like a it's a thing you can pursue, and so we're doing it. So you moved to LA. So I moved to LA from Miami. Mm -hmm. Had you been to LA before? No, no. Oh my god, it was so scary. Yeah, I one way the one way ticket with a couple bags packed and your car being shipped off on this like you know truck yeah, that's yeah, yeah. just like somewhere in Iowa, like you know on the plane. I was so nervous. I had no real friends. I had one friend that I knew that, and thank God we ended up being roommates for three years, but. I didn't really know anyone. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no money still. Like, just had never learned the concept of saving money. I was yeah. just like, oh, I'll figure it out. Um, it was so scary. But it was the best thing I ever did because I fully committed to what I wanted to do. Did you have a place to live before you moved out there? Barely. Um, <laughs> my, my friend... I, who I met in Miami, she moved out there and it's still out there and she's crushing it. She's a music supervisor. She's okay. so insanely talented. Um, she had an apartment in LA and it was a studio apartment. Yeah. And so for like a month and a half, we slept together in the same bed every night um, and then woke up and shared a bathroom. She, I, I give like she is the entire reason I exist to this day <laughs> because she was so giving. We ended up, again, living together. We found an apartment together and lived together for um, almost three years. Mm. So I'm so grateful for her. But yeah, for the first month and a half, that's what I did. And my car was like lost or something. And like yeah. it, when it arrived, someone had stolen all of my headshots. And I was like, <laughs> these are so expensive to print. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Just starting from zero here. Yeah, um, right. 
But yeah, that, I mean, no, LA, I mean, how long did you live there? I, I grew up in, well, so oh, okay. I, I grew up in LA County. So when I say I'm from LA, I'm actually from a town called Lancaster, which is like an hour and a half north of LA. Yes. I shot a g Easy music video in Lancaster. Did you really? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> so you've had the unfortunate mispleasure of being in Lancaster before. I really liked it. I mean, we were in the middle of like the desert of Lancaster. That's all desert. Y- yeah. I mean- That's the whole town. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. But what a no, sweet- No, it's not a bad spot to grow up. Yeah. Just just because of what, what I tell people is like Lancaster is great for everywhere else that isn't Lancaster, if that makes sense. It's no. like the proximity that Lancaster has to doing whatever you want to do sure. in the playground of Southern California. It's like, sure, sure, sure. you know, we're like an hour and a half from Big Bear. We're an hour from Santa Monica. We're, you know, like we can go basically anywhere and do basically anything three hours, something from Yosemite. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's, it's not bad in that context. And in the sense of living in California and specifically LA County, like it's probably the cheapest way that you can live there is by being in Lancaster. So the whole town's basically made up of people who commute to LA. And then there's a lot of aerospace out there, like Edwards Air Force Base out there, Northrop and Lockheed and stuff like that. So Yes, a lot of does. aerospace people and then a lot of commuters and then a lot of meth heads. That's like the three, love the meth heads. three groups of people. And the G-Eazy music video, <laughs> and too. And G-Eazy music video. That's hilarious that that was in Lancaster. I have to go look at that. It was a great time. <laughs> we had a great little time. We made out. It was a whole thing. With G-Eazy? Yeah. Wow. I know. He was Good lovely. for you. He was a little tipsy. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did you, uh, did you have to re- shoot that scene. <laughs> how many times did you make it <laughs> yeah it's like oh this is going a different direction just, be like, um, <laughs> just like oh, i screwed that one up let's do another take yeah yeah, yeah. uh <clears throat> that it was so interesting that whole music video i'd never done like a legit music video there's so many cooks in the kitchen yeah but it, what, it what what year was this oh god this was 20 when i was still a young spry 27 <laughs> 2017. Okay. I want to say. Um, he was hot. Like, I mean, um, he, he still he was, is. He was very attractive. Clear. Yeah. But he was also just like popping on, like, he was just like in a hot spot. That's what I was going to say. He was like, at the time, was like kind of up and comer, or, or was he already kind of at the top of that he was, point? He was like, he was, he was, he was rising. Yeah, yeah. He had, he had done some stuff. He'd had some stuff pop and he was, he was rising. And I was very intimidated and very scared. Um, and, the the one story I will say, and this was like still whatever to this day cringes me out. Um, there was a scene where I had to lay the whole thing was like a it was like six music videos in one to like make a short film was mm. kind of the vibe, and um, it was really well done. And I was playing the like cute girlfriend that he was like cheating on with his bad G Easy persona with this other just like mm. some smoke show video vixen chick. She was so hot. Um, and there was a scene where we were laying in bed and I have to like put my head on his chest while he raps. And we're in Lancaster. It's July. And we're in a little room with no air conditioning. So it's about 112 degrees in there. Yeah. At least. Yeah. You could have fried an egg. Okay. On that, on the bread spread. On his chest. Like, uh, well, <laughs> for sure. Because I, and I'm a sweater. I'm a big sweater. Like the minute... And I'm already nervous. I'm like already like yeah, yeah, the yeah. sweat glands are primed and ready to go. And <laughs> on his chest, pretending to be asleep, dripping sweat. <laughs> and it's a three minute song. So he's just like rapping to the camera. And I just am getting profusely more and more sweaty. And it's just so bad. And the song ends and I lift up my head and there's just a puddle <laughs> of sweat. And I look at this man and he looks like he just did like. Uh, 10 minutes in the cryo chamber yeah. like he there's not a drop of sweat on him i don't know what's wrong with his body i hope he's okay physically wasn't i mean everybody else, in my defense everybody else was sweating that wasn't on camera yeah and to set the, to the stage here if you haven't been to lancaster it's hot as hell in july it's like, so it hot. is the desert of southern california it literally yes. like, like legitimately was probably 108 outside it's, and if there's no air conditioning I, like that is wild that he wasn't sweating i Thank you so yeah. much. I need to that. I got that. your back, Courtney. Thank you. Yeah. And there was like 40 people in the room and it's like body on body. It's like naked. <clears throat> I'm like in a bra. So it's like naked body on body, like yeah. already s- smoking. Right. Um. And so I just, and then the the poor makeup person or prop person, someone was like, I don't know what we're going to do. And they took this huge freezing ice pack and they shoved it in my crotch. And I guess that's like where 
you cool down the fastest is like that the artery maybe okay i don't know how it works but if you're ever hot like but really worked. really hot put a cold pack in between your legs like near your crotch and i was able to make it through the three and a half minute song without sweating wow so they had to like retake it just because of the sweat for sure <laughs> I went back what did he do when he like just like saw a big puddle of sweat on his chest i mean he was he, I, I don't remember being he was nice about it yeah, yeah, yeah but i also didn't give him the space to like be mean about it because i was very much like oh my gosh and i made a big thing at, you know what i mean like, uh, i was very I much see. like yeah, yeah. Let me take let me care make of fun me. of myself first before anybody else does mm, yeah exactly smart which is shocking i'm sure yeah. <laughs> this conversation. um but yes and then we we made it through and but that was just I was I was like oh he's never we're not I guess we're not gonna get married because that's gonna be a real damper that's in your, our marriage that's your time in Lancaster that was my time in Lancaster yeah, it was a well, great time <laughs> seems like a pretty solid memory to me it was pretty great <laughs> yeah. it was pretty great actually <laughs> but so uh, I don't even remember how we got oh uh, yeah where did we yeah, go so here? I said I'm from L A and then I was <laughs> yeah, like see, 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 I'm see, not see. actually from L A I'm from Lancaster but it's just easier to say I'm from L A because no typically nobody knows where Lancaster is so well. So fun that I did. It's so fun, yeah, and had a great story to boot. Yeah. <laughs> great story. <clears throat> oh my gosh, ten out of ten. I'm crushing it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was in LA for five years, almost six. Okay, so right I think what wh where that came from is you were about to say something about where you were living in LA or something because you said how long were you in LA? You asked me that as like a. Um, I love when people on podcasts totally forget their train of thought. It is yeah, yeah, just great content. Um. Mm -hmm. We'll clip, have, we'll clip this. It'll perform it, really well. Please. And just that, us kind of looking at the camera like just, that. Just what were we talking about? <laughs> Crickets. Um, <laughs> Something about living in LA. Uh, but where were you in LA? Because oh. LA is obviously a massive, massive place. I grew up massive. there and some people will be like, oh yeah, I, I'm from LA too. And I'm like, oh cool, where? And they tell me like the name of the city and I'm like, uh, no, no idea. idea. <laughs> no idea. Well, I've lived there for 30 years. I have no idea. 20 the, years. The first couple of years I was in Mid City and no one knew where Mid City was. Mm. So I will say that. Do you know where Mid City is? Nope. <laughs> Still ran true. Is it an actual city or a town? Uh so I'm not sure how I think like maybe the real estate agent told us it was Mid City. Okay. Um I don't even know how to describe it. That's the thing, it. right? It's like it's like Los Angeles, right? It's like Los Angeles County, and then like there's a city of Los Angeles, and then there's a crazy amount of cities all around the area. Yes. You know what I mean? And yeah. then there's some that are like more like towns than they are real cities. So like your address would still technically be Los Angeles, but everybody knows it as something else. You know, it's, it's kind of yep, confusing. Yep, yep. It's very confusing. But I think it's, I've gotten kind of used to it. If you live in a city that has more than like 10 stoplights, then there's going to be like suburbs or like sub. <clears throat> sure. Spot. Developments or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Just like areas of towns. Yeah. Just so Vegas you can is. navigate it and say where things are, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Just for like societal reasons. So mm. I, I get it. Um, and LA is so huge that yeah. there's so many of them. But Mid City was like, um, it was in between West Hollywood and Culver City, but like okay. very much like in the middle of Los Angeles. Yeah. And it wasn't a great street, a very affordable housing. Yeah. <laughs> AKA not a great street. Right. Um, well, affordable too. You yeah. Know, like, Nothing in LA is affordable, but as affordable sure, sure, as sure. LA can be. Yeah. Relatively affordable, exactly. <clears throat> there was three of us living in like a little apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that was my first my first apartment. And I'm I'm actually really grateful for it because it was uh that my I I had two roommates and they were amazing and it felt like a family, mm. right? What I'm always searching for. And just spending time with them was was really, really great. But yeah, we had um the like the top of the street. Uh, was closed down, pretty sure, like a drug dealer situation. Across the street was a very large family who would have a party every single weekend till 3 a.m. And mm -hmm. they put my partying to shame. I felt like such a loser living there because <laughs> they would be, and they'd have karaoke. They always had a oh microphone, somebody like some host of their party. That's so much worse. It was awful. Um, more power to them. <clears throat> They're doing great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was an interesting, it was a, honestly a typical. First year in Los Angeles. Yeah, I was so sure. broke. I was just like doing odd jobs, barely able to pay rent. Um, did you did you go get like a job job or anything to make more money? Or were you always working in the business somehow? Oh, please. Working in the business. I was dressing up like a rabbit and handing out chocolate milk. Yeah, if yeah. you want to call that in the business. I was just whatever job could pay money where I could still audition. Yeah. Gigs, and I could still not jobs. Gig. Yeah, yeah. 100 percent I never I had a little stint where I had an actual job a few years later, but no, it was always just gigs. Yeah. 
I drove Uber for a little bit. Um, and how long were you in LA for? Three years, you said? No, f five, almost six. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So when did you come out here? 2020. 2020. Was yes. it because of the pandemic or just kind of happened to be around that time? Kind of. Um, I was dating a guy and we were long distance in 2019 and I would like go visit him and he would come visit me and we would just kind of visit each other once a month and it was just mm -hmm. my turn to go visit him in March of 2020 mm -hmm. here in Nashville and it happened to be the weekend that like, the entire country shut down mm -hmm. and so I was like oh I'll just maybe I won't fly home right <laughs> now I'll just push it back <laughs> and I kept a good old southwest flight I just kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it um until it was August and we were like, I guess we just move in together. <laughs> and I guess I get rid of my apartment in LA. I that's, guess that's what we're supposed to do. That's definitely the way to move in with somebody. It was so exciting. <laughs> By default. Um, <laughs> yes. No, no, no. We were very excited about it. Um, but yeah. And then so yeah, I, I just kind of ended up, I got stuck and then I stayed. Hmm. But I love it here. I was going to say, it's not a bad place to, to stay. No. And I'm so grateful too. I think of all these people who spent the pandemic like alone in LA. Yeah. And You're I the worst. So much power. Cause if I I mean, my ex and I were not like a, a wonderful relationship by any means, but at least I had somebody. And yeah, I wasn't like sure. insanely lonely the whole time and <clears throat> yeah. Talking to myself. So when did you start getting more um, I guess, aggressive with creating on social media? Was that intentional? Were were you like I I want to Do you think I'm this? aggressive about it? No, I just mean like when you started posting, like there's a difference between like, oh, let me post a video and yeah. like I'm going to like post videos sure, all the sure, time. Sure, sure, sure. Like you when did I, mean? I commit like, to it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I had started doing stuff on TikTok in like 2019. Okay. Um, Just for fun. Just for fun. Yeah. I mean, I think I listened to a Gary Vee podcast and I was like, oh, he's like TikTok content. Is, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, and so I just started, I, it was by no means content that I'm proud of, but I had a video go viral like the end of 2019 and I had that had never happened. I didn't even mm -hmm. create content. I was just like an actor and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, trying to do some writing. It's like I had no idea. I wasn't making anything for people to see. Mm -hmm. And then I had a, some video go viral and I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool actually. Yeah. And I was talking to my boyfriend's time and I was like, is this like a career? Like, could I do this as like a thing for money? Um, and that was the first seed that was planted. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would just do it here and there, nothing crazy. And then the pandemic hit and like many people, yeah. I just was like, I have so much time on my hands. I had booked this commercial in February and it was a national commercial. I don't know how much you know about national commercials, but they like, they pay residuals. And so literally all of 2020, I just was getting paid residuals. I didn't have to get a job or anything, nice. which is, so I, I say that because it's, it was not the same experience as other people. Um, and I'm very, very lucky to have had that and yeah. to be able to just start posting on TikTok. Stellar timing. St incredible <laughs> timing. It was a cat litter commercial and I've never been more grateful for Catch It in yeah. my life. Um, you and my dog. Yeah. Those are about the two groups of people that are grateful for cat litter or cat poop. Why does your dog like cat poop? That's a good question. Well, it's not my dog now. It was my dog growing up and I don't okay. know what it was, but we always would catch her just eating cat shit. Eating cat shit? Out of the fucking... Um, the litter box. Oh, I'm curious. Like with like the little, you know, cat litter things with on the it. The litter and on it. Yeah, it was almost like sprinkles or something. I don't know what it was. Oh my she gosh. She just fucking loved it. Wow. Yeah. That's fascinating. <clears throat> I, it's like deep fried almost a little bit. Right. Yeah. 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 It's that's, a little extra. That's disgusting. Know, <laughs> seasoning on there. Did you kiss your dog in the mouth? Uh, absolutely not. No, I still don't do that with my current dog. Yeah. She tries though. All the time. Yeah, they love it. They love a kiss in the mouth. Oh, Who yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> I get it. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. That's, we all that's do. actually true. But yeah. no, she's incessant, though. My dog now, she's like, I'm pretty sure she has OCD. You know, she just is like constantly, no matter who it <laughs> just is, she just kissing. like starts licking. She, she just, she just, she, she likes to kiss. So big liquor. Yeah. We love it. We but, love to see it. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's better than them being weird and. Yeah, yeah. Not no, she's super loving. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I make her sound annoying because she is annoying, but also she's the best. And but you would I, take a bullet for her. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah She's the best. Yeah. Same for my dog too. Um, But yeah, I – and then we're going to go back to what I was talking about, and I'm going to seamlessly start talking about it in five, four, <laughs> <Yeah>. three, <laughs> As if nothing happened. As if nothing happened. So, oh, 
TikTok. So Being grateful for cat shit. I'm grateful for cat shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I just started posting in 2020 and it took me a mm-hmm. while to figure out what I wanted to post because yeah. I'd never done it. I didn't like I also had didn't come up in the comedy space. I'd done like UCB a little bit and a few of those comedy things. What's but that? Like an improv. Oh, okay. Like gotcha, I'd done gotcha. some imp- like a lot of the people who are really successful have like a yeah. background in comedy when they mm-hmm. start kind of doing anything, but especially creating content um, on the internet. I didn't have that. So I didn't have like <clears> characters. <throat> I didn't know what kind of stuff to write. Um, when I first started doing it, it was just all lip sync. So oh, okay. I guess I was like, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Like um, trends and audio yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was all audio stuff. And it was just like, how do you get your audio to go viral? And so it, I think I was doing it con- consistent-ish and having some growth. Um, but I think I honestly didn't really figure out what I wanted to do and like what my lane was until probably like 2022. So it was like two years of just kind of free falling. Mm-hmm. And then 2022 was the year where I kind of picked a lane. And then I started making some money off of it. And then um, I feel like it's just kind of- Just purely from TikTok? Slowly grown. Yeah, it was TikTok. And then, you know, Instagram <coughs> started. And mm-hmm. I was still doing some commercials. And I still okay. was doing stuff like that um, as well. But but yeah, I was I was I, I started make, getting like a few brand deals here and there to mm. kind of fill the. I think I was still making cat litter money in 2022, honestly. Nice. So grateful. Spreading that cat litter money. So grateful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was kind of the trajectory. And then obviously, <clears throat> the past like six months, I've been really trying to kind of expand with what I'm doing and blah yeah. blah blah. That's so, not obvious. I don't know why I said obviously, but <laughs> for me, it's obvious. But that's what's. Well, talk to me about that then. What what's what do you got next? Like, what is this something now that you're fully pursuing full time, like the creator stuff versus acting, or is it you're kind of still doing both and they both help each other? Or what's the strategy there? I think it's so funny because like when I was when I first moved to LA, if you were someone who was making like Instagram videos or vines, you were not legit. Correct. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like yeah. It all in the acting community, mm-hmm. it was like, oh my God, I would never do that. Right. I would I'd be like, oh my gosh, if you ever see me making Instagram videos, shoot me. Yeah, right. <laughs> um then please don't. <laughs> I said that too. <laughs> um but but it was I think it was just very different. It was looked at as like hacky. It's very hacky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is crazy because all those people are so successful now. Right. Um, but I just think Well, was, that's what it takes, right? It's literally that's that's the cycle. It's like cringe your way to the top. Exactly. Well, right. Exactly. When for something first starts, everybody talks shit about it. And then yes. a couple people do it very well, become extremely successful, and then everybody goes, Oh, I guess it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's hard to argue with like Logan and Jake Paul when it's like, oh well, it's pretty cool that you were like fighting in Super Slam WWE the same night your brother was fighting a legit fighter and boxing and you guys are both selling millions of pay-per-view tickets like yep, yeah, yep. it's hard to argue with that yep. you know there's, what i mean like there's actually kind of good job you yeah know? <laughs> like for sure yeah and i think the lines have definitely blurred as far as like the hollywood crossover as well yeah i think we're still kind of you know there'll always be like the, the older gatekeepers who still kind of want to keep it separate but yeah. i feel for like for now for now of course everyone does because they're eventually. really old <laughs> <laughs> yeah. everyone kicks the can um But I think, so for me to answer your question, that was a long winded way of just saying like, I'm trying to help, I'm trying to, I'm hoping that it all feeds together Mm -hmm. because I'm a much better actor than I am a content creator, which is wild because I'm making- Why do you say that? um, I've been doing it for 10 years. I've been an actor. What what would you define though as like an act, like how would you differentiate between an actor and a content creator? Um, If you give me a script to break down and act in front of you, I feel more comfortable doing that. Got it. And I feel like a little more secure in that craft, if you will, than creating, like then like the branding and everything that goes behind a content creator. Got it, got it, got it. I'm learning it and I'm obviously, uh, it's it's pretty much the only way I'm making money right now. I'm not really making money from acting. It's more like it's more like kind of owning your small business being a content creator versus like acting is like, I do this one piece of the entire puzzle yes. and somebody else puts those pieces together into a project. For sure. For sure. And I, I and, and I also write and do filmmaking and stuff like that too. So that I also do creation of like more long form stuff. Mm-hmm. Not getting any money for it, but I, that's like, it's all a goal. Like yeah, I, yeah. my, my big goals, like I want an EGOT. I want, you know what an EGOT is? Uh, I've heard of it. Okay. But Emmy? You can, if you can, Grammy, Oscar. Uh, no, uh, Emmy. Emmy. Yeah, Grammy, Emmy, Oscar, Oscar, Tony. Tony, yeah, yeah. Tony's gonna be hard. <laughs> Tony's a difficult one. Tony's gonna be a hard one to get. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll get there. 
Um, but I, but I, you know, I want to um, create a show, and I also want to have a um, a product, and I want I want to do it all. I kind of I want to have a production company that helps other people put their films and TV shows and content and all that stuff. Okay. And I'm hoping the lines they're definitely starting to blur, <clears throat> um, where yeah. you see people who are mainly in content and mainly or influencers or whatever they may be definitely crossing over into mm -hmm. more of a space because the, the views you get and then yeah. i'm not this has been said to death but it is true the views you get on social media outweigh the views that most tv shows and movies get yeah. by tenfold well and as so a production company the biggest gap in production is distribution yeah you know what i mean it's like the there's a plenty of production companies that can make really high quality stuff Mm -hmm. but getting it seen by people is the most difficult part of the business, you know? Absolutely. And so if you have this built-in distribution engine, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's extremely helpful. I would assume from like, uh, you know, I'm not in the business or whatever, but I just, you know, I'm not dumb. <laughs> I feel like I, you can look at, you can look at that and be like, yeah, you know, if we, if For we're looking sure. at these two people, this one, you know, that like, um, King Batch is in a bunch of these different types of, of movies and roles. And he's not like he's the leading man or whatever, but he gets like some really great roles and stuff. And I have to think he's a great actor. I'm not taking anything away from him, but also if you have 25 million Instagram followers to be like, Hey, check out my role in this movie, then that's like literally just free advertising for that production. Well, and Hollywood's so obsessed with IP. It's so obsessed with intellectual property. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, the Marvels and the whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think right now they're finally starting to realize that content creators and influencers and people with these numbers are IP mm -hmm. in themselves. Yeah. And I love that. <laughs> um, that was kind of the whole reason I started doing it was to be like, oh, I can create myself as IP and maybe be able to pitch what I want to do and be able to get into rooms that I would never have been able to get into mm -hmm. yeah. as someone who has no platform. Um, and then if I get to make people laugh and feel seen or whatever the fuck in the meantime, make some money, great. Mm -hmm. um, but it all it all feeds it all together. And yeah, there's these amazing content creators and comedians who are finally able to showcase their talent. Yeah. They might not have gotten the opportunity to, to totally. do. And they're getting roles and they're working and it's just, it's uh, totally. so incredible. I had that conversation um, literally a couple of days ago in LA with this guy, um, his name is Zach Justice. I don't know if you know him or follow him at all, but he's got a, a podcast called Dropouts and um, it has just gone really well. Started around the same time, making some videos, doing some stuff and then just stuff started going really well. And then we were just talking um, on the podcast the other day and uh, he got a script that, was like funded and he's going to be the the you know starring role in the script that he wrote and whatever and it's like it, it was clearly like a direct correlation to them being able to see that there's evidence that people like this version of the character that i am on these videos you know what yeah. I mean? and so people are <clears throat> using it and, and that's what i told him was just like it's so cool to be able to do that because you're letting the market decide you're not mm -hmm. letting the gatekeepers decide. It's yeah. like it's not up to them. It's up to if the market accepts it, and they know that too. They're, and it's not. I'm, it's not like it's a battle. They're not upset about it. It's just like those are the facts. You know, yeah. like their job is to sell shit, not just to create it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, there's a lot of people vying for for funding for their scripts. There's a lot of people trying to get good directors. There's a lot of people with good projects and good ideas. But ultimately, if you can also sell a little bit of it, and you have some proof that people like what you're doing. Yeah. It makes everything just a little bit easier. You know what I mean? For sure. That's... And why not give yourself the edge if you exactly, can? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I just and there's just some really, really talented people. And then I'm like, I want to see that person in a movie. I want to see that person make a movie. I want to mm. see that person write their own TV show. I want to see that person in a reality show. Whatever it may be. I want to see that person host something. Yeah. Like I I myself have people that I'm rooting for. And I think I think that's just wonderful and I, and, and I hope that it just continues to grow and the lines just completely cross over and there's no lines anymore and it's just all in one Yeah, because it's how we consume stuff anyways. We're yeah. watching TikTok while we're watching movies anyway. Like it's all it's all together anyways. In the age of streaming platforms, man, it's, it's going to be wildly different in 10, 20, 30 years. And that's why Quentin totally. Tarantino came out and was like, yeah, this is my last movie. It's like things are just different now and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really like how it's going, but you know, it, it, it's going the way that it's going and this is going to be my last film, you know, because like even yeah. people that are like legendary like him are looking at it. The landscape is a completely di it's wildly different, wildly different. I think he'll still do stuff. It just will be different. I think just so. look different. Yeah, I hope so. I hope As so a fan too. of just these so movies, they're so good. I don't think I think I think that when you are someone like Quentin Tarantino or these people that are just like legit artists, just oh, like so much. But he's like 
artist. Yeah. Like I know people who know him and I know people vaguely who know him sure. and they, they would like sit around and watch movies and take notes and talk about the movie all day and they would pop another movie in and they would take notes and they would sit around and talk. He loves movies so much and I think these like legit artists, these pure yes. artists, yeah. they can't not make art. Mm-hmm. They'll go crazy. Right. I feel like I'm in that same camp. I'll go crazy if that, I don't make that's art. That's what we're hoping, right? Is like, I, I, think yeah. I think he'll just have like a little bit of a mourning phase, you know, to like mourn sure. what's gone. Because that version of Hollywood is is going away, you know what I yeah. mean. So, I think sometimes you just got to take a take a beat and be like, I don't want to be a part of it. But then also, like you said, like what are you going to do? Well, yeah, just again, chill. He's like, come on. Like I said, he's an artist. Right. He's super emo too. So he's gonna yeah. he's gonna be sad. He's gonna cry, and then he's gonna get angry. Yeah. And then he's gonna make a movie. About right. it. <laughs> so exactly. It's That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're hoping for. Fingers crossed. Um, well, Courtney, it's been so much fun. Thank you for coming on. Where yeah. can people go to learn more about you and find some of the stuff you're working on? Um, come to my apartment. Let's have a chat. <laughs> Here's my address. Um, no, I uh I'm at it's Courtney Michelle on all platforms. At um, it's Courtney Michelle. Correct. I'm Great. trying to build my YouTube. I'm doing like some different sketchy stuff on YouTube in the upcoming months. Sketchy stuff. Sketchy stuff. Yeah. A lot of nudity. <laughs> a lot of hair in places you've never seen hair. Um, no, like more sketch oriented with like all of my very uh, way funnier than me friends. Got it. And we're doing some kind of different stuff that's awesome. not on my platform. So excited cool. about that. At It's Courtney Michelle on all platforms. Go check out some of the stuff that Courtney has. Save it. Share it. Get the algorithm working for her. Courtney, this is awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me.